thanks so much for doing this. Uh, appreciate it. Just just going back to 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 Watford, if I may, just ahead of the, ahead of the game on Sunday. It is a strange situation. I know you saw you smile there before, you know, because obviously they're just over the hedge. Do you have any sort of relationship with you know extra relationship with with the guys with from next door? And what have you made of what's what's happened? Um, I this- think we try to have more privacy with each other because the fences are just next door, and nobody wants to see what the other one is is doing uh, obviously there is a lot of uh, staff that are connected uh, we live in the same area and everything but um but not me personally at least i don't have any uh, strong <laughs> no sure i mean it has been a strange season for them i i guess a few weeks ago you'd never have thought it would come down to to the final game and now now it must be a, it, it must be a strange one because you you know it's a game Presumably, you absolutely have to win after Tuesday night, but feel feel their pressure and their their, their determination to for survival. Yeah, but we can only do what uh, we're supposed to do, and it's uh, to go out there and try to win the game, and and that's it. As I mentioned before, this happened over ten months, you no, know, the last one or two games, and uh, <coughs> we have to do our job. They have to try to come here and win the game as well, and and that's what uh, all seals would do. Just on the back of Tuesday night, you, you spelt out how you know you, you felt that the club was right behind you, and that and that's obviously clearly great to to hear and see. I, I guess so much of that is you know for next season and the planning is going to be about the Europa League, isn't it? And 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 where you know whether the club can get you know win the FA Cup, you know contracts signings. Everything must be must be driven by that in in such yeah, a way. Yeah, just uh, look at the the amount of things, the unpredictable things that uh, you are mentioning there, and that's what uh, I said after the the Liverpool game, and uh, that I sustained. But at the same time, I have to say that uh, I am very confident um, with the way that the, the owners and the board are um, approaching this crucial time for us because uh, we know that we don't have any margin for error, that everything has to be so planned and with a great process um, to put the team into the next level very quickly. And uh, once we know a little bit more and when we have more information about where we are, it will be easier to make those decisions. Yeah, I guess, I guess there'll always be some nervousness from fans, but it, you know, from what you see, that basically, and, and you know, you can hear the passion and your determination in, in the voice and the way that you speak. You, you're still very, very confident for for the future and indeed next season. Listen, I came here. I knew the challenge uh, to come in the middle of the season with all the issues that were happening. And once you are inside, you can even dig deeper and realize and start to understand why things happen and its consequences of many little aspects. And uh, I am so convinced that we're going to do it right. Um, we need a little bit of time. And uh, the fans, when they get nervous, it's normal. For me, it's not that they get nervous. It's frustration that uh, this club and his history is there, you know, and people are relating this bunch um, with success, with joy, with emotion, with trophies, you know. And we cannot change that. And we have, must not try to change that because what it makes us big. And we only have to think like that. And for me, it's the only way to think about this club and, and the future of it. And if we are all in the same pace like that, we will make it. But we have to do it and then transmit it to the players, to every member of every staff, and then to the public and the fans. And if we do that and we are together with that mindset, we will do it. You, you, basically, what you're saying is you shouldn't be afraid of it. You should embrace it. You should use Absolutely. it. It's the situation, is what it is. Let's take it, let's embrace it, but let's do something. Let's analyze why things happen. And the things that they are not working have to get changed. If not, we're going to get back to the same spot in six months, in a year, in a two years. And we have to be so determined and clear in our process in order to do that the best possible way. And then this beautiful game is the most unpredictable one in the world. And you can do everything right or everything wrong, and it still can work in both directions. But from our side, we have the responsibility to do it really well, and at least as well as we all know. Mikhail, thanks very much indeed. Good luck Sunday. Thank you. Nick at the Guardian. Hi, Mikhail. Thanks for your time, as always. Hello. Um, talking about why um, why things happen, um, I was looking on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, there's a league table of chances created this season by Premier League, by Premier League clubs, and Arsenal, I think, are 16th out of, out of 20 in terms of chances created. 
Now, we don't associate Arsenal with that, especially in the last 20, 25 years. Um, why, why do you think that is? I have uh, my reason that I don't want to make uh, public, but uh, it's clear. I mean, they don't like those stunts. And when you relate that to Arsenal is not uh, good enough, and there are certain aspects of the games that we don't control as well as we should do. Do you think it's personnel related in terms of... Uh, it's uh, everything. It's personal. It's myself that I have to improve much better and do things much better. Uh, individual, collective issues, a lot of things. Because you you played in and, of course, have also coached such incredibly creative teams yourself and you, you were a creative player too. Does that make it a particular frustration and a particular thing that you would like to get right? Yes, but... Uh, at the same time, when you are in a process, when you need immediate results and immediate performance and give you the best team to the, the best chance to the team, sorry, to fight for the objectives that we have short term, you have to find a way to do it because you cannot just uh, shoot yourself in the feet trying to do something in certain moments that you are not able to do, you know, and um, we are trying to find this way, but obviously the next step in our evolution has to be very much linked into that to improve that area a lot. Do you feel that there is still maybe too much pressure on on your strikers? Because, for example, on, on Tuesday night, Villa defended very well, Ober didn't really get in the game too much. Does it put too much, too much strain on them at the moment? Yes, and we have to put that into the collective uh, side more and, um, and everybody should understand better how are we going to do that process? But um, it's inevitable. At the end of the day, they have to be the one scoring the goals and the others have to get the service right for them and more consistency to get in the right areas more often. And just um, a different topic. I think um, if my maths is right, on Sunday it will be your 12th game in 39 days. And I remember talking to you back in February and you, you said, I think, that the top-level players were, were cracking under, under the demands of, of pressure. Now, obviously, this is a really unique situation now, but you're going to play on Sunday, play next week, and then have a few weeks off, maybe a couple of weeks, and then you're going to go again. And, and it's clear that the players are making a massive physical effort, but are you, right. are you, um, are you worried about them, especially with, with a cut Well, I'm them? worried, and, for example, most of injuries, is, I think, is related to that because we had to expose our players and... Um, and we had some really bad injuries, don't forget, in the last few weeks where we lost big, big players. Our goalkeepers, central defenders, Martinelli, central midfielders. Um, but it's what it is. Uh, it's an unprecedented time with the COVID. We knew the challenge afterwards. The Premier League has done the best possible way to fit all the fixtures into this calendar year. And we're going to move everything back to the next season. So... It's our responsibility to try to put a plan together where we don't expose them as much as we can. But sometimes it's inevitable because uh, when you don't have the numbers, they have to keep playing. It's, it's going to make pre-season difficult, isn't it? Because there'll be a few people playing catch-up on fitness. Yes, but uh, it's going to be the same for everybody. And then imagine the, the teams that are playing in Champions League. <laughs> so uh, we have to adapt. And just finally, have you have you enjoyed the intensity of this spell? Like it's been great to play again, obviously, and 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 to be out there. But have you enjoyed it, honestly? I could enjoy more after a win if I have a few days more, at least, you know. But uh, again, it's uh, it's what it is. Uh, for a first job, it's been quite a challenge. Uh, to be fair, and try to embrace it, give my best, um, try to help the club and the players as much as I can, and. Uh, and we'll have time to enjoy more in other moments, but at the moment it's just uh, work, work, review, work, and uh, and try to improve. Thank you, Mikael. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Nick. Just a reminder, that section, 10.30 deadline tonight. A couple of final ones for the Sundays, um, and that will be 10.30 Saturday night. Start with Rob from the Mail on Sunday. 